Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 57, titled Googly Eyes on LLU. Uh, in this show, we're talking about, once again, lo local loop unbundling, uh, the MediaTek, F&B app, and Google Engage. Thank you for listening. Uh, welcome to Let's Talk Geek, uh, episode 57. Uh, with us in the uh, studio tonight, we have Johan Els. Hello, Tim. How are you tonight? Very well yourself. Uh, a little bit tired, feet are sore, but uh, very nice. Well, Thank we're you. We're going to find out shortly why. Uh, we have Quinton uh, von Israel. Von Israel. Yeah, sorry, I just got half of <laughs> your surname. I thought I had the wrong no one. No worries. Um, at Quinton Zede. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Jan von Mielen. Jan's, uh, Jan. You can do this. You can do this. Uh, no, it's Zede, but there's a, there's a, there's a letter always forget in the Yes, middle. my surname, first letter. V, Jan V Zede. Excellent. <laughs> Jan V Zede. Yes, that's because of all those cyber squatters sitting on all the good stuff. <laughs> and then we have Mixer, who, who shall not be named, because she, she does not wish to. He, he who sh uh, she who will <laughs> not have been, shall, be, shall not be named. <laughs> that thing. I'm very pleased to announce that this will be the first show being mixed for us by a female. Yeah. So thank you very much. Hope you have a lot of fun back there. And may this be the first of many, many such, such occasions. Yeah, sh sh She'll be our very own Stig. <laughs> the, stick, oh. the stick mixer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Not you a bad. nice. We'll get you like uh, a, we'll get you one of those helmets, a Boba Fett helmet or something. Something yeah. that'd yeah. be rad. Some say that she once made Steve Ballmer say please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in other things, uh, we are live streaming from South Africa tonight for the first time. Very, um, very well done. We, you know, it still needs to be tested a bit more, but uh, as time goes by, we're going to obviously ramp this up and do some more stuff with it. Absolutely. But thank you, MWeb, so, so, so much for the cheap service. Yeah. What an indictment, though, on the South African landscape that only now, in 2011, is it financially feasible to host a high bandwidth site locally. It's, it's just shocking. ridiculous. It just, uh, before now, you weren't saving bandwidth by going overseas. Because we're all, okay. yes. Let's just look at it. Why MWeb? I mean, they were the guys that decided to go January this year and go, you want me to pay for peering bandwidth? Forget about it. I'm not going to pay. Mm. So they're probably the only guys because leading in the way that they did, that they are now able to offer uncapped hosting because they're not paying anybody. For local transit. For local transit. True, but so the, the other big guys could have. So that's why I said kudos for MWeb for what absolutely. they've done. They actually they got the local peering and then decided not to charge people mm. for their advantage. That and then they didn't stop there. They announced two additional products after this whole mm -hmm. thing about Uncapped. I mean, this I haven't looked at it yet. This whole 3G ADSL combined account system. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard some complaints, but um, but I mean, like uh, people take time to complain. People don't take time to compliment. If that makes Unfortunately, sense. Unfortunately, yeah. 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 But I mean, so that's also looking at a one-stop shop <coughs> for all your bandwidth requirements. I mean, I got an email from them. I'm an ADSL Uncapped subscriber, and they actually emailed me to remind me that I've got Wi-Fi free connectivity in most Wimpies in the country, and I use no. it quite a lot. Did I you did not, not know about that? No. Is this through Always On or G Connect or what? Always is On or G Connect. If you actually go into, oh, you know so they roam on either. They roam on either. Nice. So okay, actually, yeah. when you go into Wimpy, connect to the Wi-Fi, um, the login screen you get, you actually say you're MWeb subscriber. You put in your standard ADSL username and password, connect, and you're on. And they give you five hours, not capped. It's very it's, cool. Sorry, four hours. Oh, whatever. They give you a time. But that oh. whole system on uh, Always On also shows you a little summary page that actually tells you where you are in the story. Cool. And also now they've got the five gig uh, hosting that you can, well, not hosting, uh, like driver space, cloud, cloud storage. Oh, space. the cloud storage, yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, which I did sign up for, and that's as far as I, I have looked at it. It's web based. Yeah. Um, only. So they actually give you a web interface file manager type of scenario that you actually then upload your files. And then it's sitting there and you can download it. The interface is very clean. I must say that. I mean, Question my, this is okay, my late grandmother, my parents should be able to use it. So it's something that you can upload. If I upload a file there, can I give that URL to somebody else? No, no, that is very basic. Okay, I'm just wondering because that would be pretty but cool. But the idea behind it, what they, what they, how they're marketing it for now is simple that those documents you don't want to lose, upload it into that cloud. You can now access it anywhere so you can get back to it. Now, 
like I said, because they kept the interface so simple, because that sharing option, I tried to explain to one of my colleagues to get a file to somebody else how to get through Dropbox sharing. And it did take, I then realized it's actually not that straightforward. It's, it's, mm, for mm. us, it's simple. Cl click on the little icon, up come, go share, copy, paste. But for the general user out there, it's yeah, actually... I, I agree. I've been setting it up in my office and trying to convince them this is a good idea. Once I've got them working, they're all like obvious. But to actually initially to explain and set it up take, takes a tiny while. And the adoption is quite a while. Mm. So what they're doing there is great. I think it's going to be awesome. And yeah, let's wait for the next big announcement. Looks like they at the current rate, they're doing one a month. So <laughs> what's in the pipeline next from MWeb? We'll have to see. And we must categorically state we are not funded by them or sponsored by them at in no. any way at the moment. So we just is, like them. We mm. just, from all our experiences with them, they've done well. And, and th that's the other thing I had to mention is installing the guys that helped us with the install were oh, incredibly the, helpful. Uh, come what's and, I, and I have actually, it's uh, Paul and, uh, not Carrot, Gerhard. Gerard, yeah. Gerard. And I, we actually have bugged them quite a couple of times when we had problems. Yeah. yeah, and getting there. And, uh, so they've been great. They've been so, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can really highly, <coughs> highly recommend the help from in the Joburg office. Mm. All right, talking about that. And um, now onto the people we love to hate, Telcom. <laughs> wow, what did they do this time? Uh, it's this whole unbundling thing and them telling, telling us that no, 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 they, they sell the copper lines at below cost and they recover it by doing the voice services. So if they unbundle, now they're going to have to charge with 250 Rand per line. And <laughs> oh, shame, poor them. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's more than poor them um, because, I mean, th there is some, and this is what Sam was, was explaining to us when, when she came in for that show. I don't remember which show that is. Um, search, let's talk <laughs> geek. 55, I think. Yeah, for Sam Perry, um, who did, who's doing her master's, um, including yeah. local loop unbundling. I think it's focused on local loop unbundling. If I, look, I can't remember exactly what the term was, but it's effectively local loop unbundling. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just a general term for it. Yes? Sorry, I'm quickly scanning the my broadband. He says, the actual cost of providing a subscriber with a fixed line is well above 250 rand. He didn't say per month. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it, it or is it just assumed to be the monthly it's charge? Implied. It's implied. It's it's per month, um, because uh, look, the the there's there's reason for that, and I think it's because of the the unique set of circumstances we got in South Africa. Firstly, they get the the copper gets stolen. Um, it's not like we we're the only country in which this happens, but it happens way That's too enough, often yeah. here. Um, so they've got to replace it. Um, it the, the, the copper infrastructure is aging. And so Telcom, I know that this is a fairly a sensitive point because a lot of people feel quite rightly that the taxpayer paid for that infrastructure under the old regime, right? And so um, it should be unbundled because it's not Telcom's. It's the people of South Africa's. But Telcom has been replacing some of that aging infrastructure with new copper cable. Um, so, I mean, keeping track... The, the bottom line is, is that all affects overheads. Uh, that all affects that 250 rand. That's yes, all I'm driving. My at. question is, okay. the 250 rand is that assuming it's a new copper line that you've installed and maintained and all the rest of it? More than that, it, uh, like uh, that's a, that's a normally a general overhead, right? Mm, so mm. in other words, there's all kinds of operational costs worked into that 250 rand. Fire a, fire some folks and see that cost drop. I, I mean, that's a very unpopular thing to say, but I'm I'm. I'm fairly certain that Telcom is not running it nearly as efficiently as it can. Um, and so you're paying a whole bunch of salaries for folks to maintain those lines at 250 Rand a month when that cost can come down. Um, and if there were competition, it would come down. They would sure. find a way to bring it down. Now, all that said, what this is driving at is that um, uh, the, the, the probably the most logical uh, way people are looking at making local full local loop unbundling, or, well, not full, but local loop unbundling happen in any way if the guys are going to have to get access to the, the copper. The naked copper. Is to spin a company off of Telcom to manage it. The same that they did with uh, BBC. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, BT. Not BBC. BT. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, and and there, there are different ways around that, and, and we've spoken about it, and, and Rudy... Uh, Janssen from MWeb has actually suggested, listen, forget about full unbundling, forget about the spinning the uh, company off, go for the easy win. Get us naked ADSL, uh, which Telcom obviously yeah. is, uh, is trying to make a point against with the 250 Rand, and, and give us bitstream access, um, uh, which is a fairly technical thing, but what that basically means is... Well, currently, bitstream is sort of what they have with IP Connect. That's exactly what it is, yeah. in fact. So um, between IP Connect and Chipac, 
um, we'll offer a service. And, it, and uh, the way it was explained to me is actually that it's all about the handover point. So um, local loop unbundling is all about where you move the handover point to. Is it at the raw copper? Now we're talking full unbundling, right? Um, are we talking um, at, uh, at, some, at some node? Yeah, at the exchange. Now we're talking another That's form. True. Yeah. Um, and is it a little further up? Now we're talking, you know, sort of the, IP IP, yeah, yeah. the IP connecting that we've got at the moment. So, um, so there, there are some arguments for and against this thing. Um, and, and one has to say, because, I mean, we have been warned about this for quite some time, that if full unbundling were to happen, then the company that has to turn just the rent of the copper into a profitable business will likely drive up prices in the short term. And that is something people have to be prepared for. Okay, but also the thing is, okay, so you, uh, you drive up the cost, let's announce something, instead of costing 130 30 rand yeah. for the copper, it costs you 250 rand, but then the guys get access to it. They might not be charging the 500 rand for the 4 meg ADSL. Um, also, when they're recouping their costs, they're recouping the AD, the internet part with that. So they might actually, so currently now, uh, what's my line, it's 1,000 something, might, that's the, the, the total amount you need to pay will come down. Yes, yes. And um, I don't remember now, but okay, I remember we, we, it, we're it spending being a lot explained. Of yeah. time on this now, but yes. 250 rand a month. No. That's, that's not, the, the way people think about it is that it's just a piece of copper going to, uh, going to the exchange. But, but isn't that what we're talking about? Well, yes and no. There are services running on that copper. And there, there is termination equipment on either side, all right, that, that needs to be taken but into account. But if local loot gets unbundled, that is not Telcom's issue anymore. So what is well, a piece of... it will be effectively because there, uh, some company will have to take care of this. No. So give me the charge from the, from the exchange to my house. What does that piece of copper cost me? And let the other service providers then charge me for from the exchange to them. Yeah, there's, there's lots of different... I well, well yeah, that, that, that's sort of, that's now not full unbundling. So what you're talking about is effectively uh, a, a kind of... Last mile. Access. Um, so the last no, no, mile is uh, handled by Telcom. He is talking about full unbundling. Is effectively, it's copper into the exchange, and then basically they connect the copper pair directly into the Neotel. At the end of the day, sure, if sure. you look at how, how the fiber has been rolled out, take our suburb, we've got everybody down in the street... So if Neotel wants to give me a service, they need to, to cut their own fiber, put a termination point in, have the bro copper bro come out, find my copper pair in that exchange, connect it into their service, and we're done. Yeah. Mm. But, so no, then but let this Neotel is why you need a third me. party. Um, because um, like Telcom doesn't want Neotel in their exchanges, probably with good reason. Um, so, um, I mean, it, having, it, having too many cooks yeah. in that broth is a bad idea, um, especially considering that Telcom itself, I would wager, has, has sort of lost track of, uh, I mean, things used to be very well documented, and things are, are a bit of a mess at the moment, apparently. Yeah. Well, let, on, on that point, let's rather move along. <laughs> <laughs> so I know some other things. That yeah, yeah, let, let's, but, but fair enough, but this cool. is what, my point is, is that that's why we need a third party, is somebody to, that you can co call and say, listen, this customer, once their service moved to Neotel, please switch the fiber pair. Y effectively, you're recommending what BT has done, uh, BT, where they spun off that bit. For full unbundling, but yeah. I, I tend to side with the argument, which is hold off on full unbundling. It, it's something we should work towards, absolutely. Go for the easy win now. Cool. Anyway, we're going to move on. Uh, Johan, you were at, I forgot about to mention, stardates.co today for all your events happening in South Africa. And we'll put some serious time back into it when we've got some time. Yeah. And the main reason I want to mention that is this event going on right now. That yes, at, at the Dome uh, in uh, Northgate. Uh, every two years, the broadcasting, post-production, staging companies run their yearly ex or t uh, bi-yearly uh, uh, exhibition. It's at the Dome, started today, tomorrow and Friday. Um, this is where anybody in the broadcasting, uh, staging, uh, audio environment can actually go and see what's the new and greatest things on the block. And gentlemen, I can tell you, and I've spoken to a stuff. bunch of guys, A, the show every year, that's one of the little shows in this country, mm -hmm. every year is better. And one of the main things is what they found is uh, last year was the last time they ran it on Saturdays. Because on Saturdays, you get feet, and that's it. There's yeah. no checkbooks. So they actually have shortened the show to three days. And that's actually caused um, the exhibitors to spend more money. Because then now they know the guys they're seeing in the next three days are potential buyers, not just browsers. 
and your your the amount of people you're speaking to, those guys are going to be far more interested. Absolutely. And your conversion rate should be higher then. Absolutely. Now, what do they cover? They cover from um, lighting, cameras, light. your LED lighting. LED oh, light. there's some beautiful lighting out there. Um, from cameras, from media management system, post production systems. Adobe again is in big force there, pumping their Adobe Premiere products. Um, Avid is there. Sony cameras are there. Sony themselves, I uh, actually spoke to one of the to one of the exhibitors. They cancelled their reservation for a stand when the whole earthquake struck. Struck. Okay, all right. Which was March. Yeah. Whatever. Was yeah. Oh, March, April. Um, but then subsequently, they actually decided. Well, they've got their factories back online and everything. They want to exhibit. <laughs> they couldn't get a space. So. Which is it's it's it's, it's given a very interesting thing because there's four main distributors of the main of the Sony products in the country, and now those guys have upped their displays for Sony, which actually made it very interesting to move around between the cameras uh, suppliers, looking at the same camera, and getting a very different opinion on the same camera. So that was very nice. Panasonic is there. JVC is there. Um, there's projectors, guys. You have never seen something in your life like this. There's LED displays, which. There's, there's one crowd that's running Avatar on an LED oh, beautiful. display, but not, not LED LCD. Mm -hmm. okay? I'm talking about a full screen wall built with little LEDs running an HD movie. It's just unbelievable. It's just, Brilliant. And it's massive. And there's um, cameras. There's, 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 there's uh, 3D cameras that fit into a, 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 a cigarette box. It's, that's a size. A HD 3D camera. As a as point as and camera or, or no, 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 uh, video, uh, camera. video camera, video Very camera, sure. video camera. Sony um, launched uh, or they provided to the guys the, the their uh, Canon 5D um, competitor camera. Yes, I'm very mixed feeling on that because, uh, and I've, I told it to all the guys. I mean, the 5D you can still take and uh, take out and take some wildlife photos. The Sony camera you're not going to take out and take wildlife photos. So. If you've got the time, go around there. The shows also, the hours are very short. They've really, they've really honed it down to make it uh, very good for the exhibitors to not be too tired, to be able to talk to people. Um, it's only open from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. So, and it's only yeah, today, tomorrow, and, and, and Friday. And if you've ever wanted to experience what South Africa can do on staging audio, they've actually, outside, they've built a... A, um, a staging stage. sound yeah. stage, but no, I, I'm, I'm battling to get the words because it's actually four stages facing each other, and they've got four companies that've put their gear on there, so they could actually have a a sound off towards each other. Now I can tell you, two years ago, the guys got told to bring the volume down because the guys in Northgate Cinema <laughs> couldn't hear their movies. So you can you can just imagine? I mean, this is at the dome. <laughs> In the parking lot at the Dome, the guys in the Northgate Cinema couldn't hear the movie. And they had to bring the Pretty volumes sure. down. So those guys can really... And there's OB vans. There's SABC has got their HD van there. So if you ever wanted to see what... W whereabouts is it situated? Uh, at the at Dome the itself. Dome? Okay. Northgate. Yeah. So Northgate Dome, all the GPSs have got the Dome on it. Um, very nice. Definitely worth it. If you can make the time, go around there. Um, even if you don't want to talk to anybody walking around just seeing all that equipment there's lots of money in there beautiful stuff there oh imagine. there's some beautiful stuff there so i really suggest if you want to just go make it uh, make a turn there all right cool thank <coughs> you all right i'm gonna just skip ahead quickly um and quinton yes you were at an event today yes i was and i know johan's also quite excited about this i was standing yeah. at the queue outside of out a media tech waiting for the doors to open i was a, i was a bit early um, oh, I, was, <laughs> I was there at six. <laughs> so I ended up sitting in the McDonald's and working on our live event that we yeah. shot the weekend that you need to mention. And then I saw, saw these tweets coming through about F&B and it was quite, please tell us. I mean, right. um, well, F&B launched their banking app today, officially. It's been available since this morning before the event, actually on the Android and the Apple and the BlackBerry stores. Um, what it is, it's an app where you can do all your online banking directly from your smartphone without the need for a web interface, obviously. Okay. Um, so that is good. It's not uh, the yeah. change to the <coughs> Connect app. It's a separate app, all right. banking uh, only. My, my question is this, why not just do that in a web app? There are some advantages. Um, for one, the you have to separately sign on in your branch for mobile banking online. This app, if you've got internet banking, you can lo log into this app. 
and you can uh, do all your internet banking. Uh, some of the features that they have is uh, currently available is you can view branch information, uh, get a GPS location of nearest ATMs, nearest branches. Um, you can get, on your transactions, you get detailed balances, detailed transaction history, searching for a specific transaction, making payments to beneficiaries, making doing transfers between accounts. Um, you can do ac you can access the FNB directory. What you can do today yet, but it's coming very soon, is you can create new beneficiaries. Um, and then also, which uh, what I very, very uh, like very much, is you can contact FNB call centers free with via, via VoIP call from the app. It's powered oh, by yes. whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again. You can contact if you've got problems with your banking or your card. You don't need to call the call center. You use your app and you get a free VoIP call to the call center. Amazing. Yeah, that's that, is, that, is, that is quite clever, I must say. Yeah. That is clever. So what, what is coming is even more I interesting. Um, uh, near field communications, they're going to utilize that with their app. You can be able to do uh, bump payments, Google payments. Bump uh, payments, you mean NFC? Yeah, but now there's two different things that they're doing. One is bump payments. The other one is if you're driving through Tollgate, for instance, and you've got the app on your phone, you can drive through and it will do, do that as well. So it's going to be oh. NFC. So you need well to touch a pad. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they differentiate between bump payments and NFC. There's two different things that we're going to do with it. So I'm not How will that yeah. bump payment work through the toll gate? Okay, That's well just okay. What, what right. sense you get they NFC, use? which is the toll gate payment. And that yeah. will be, it will be a, um, if you go in the cloud train, you'll, you'll see it. It's, it'll be a big pad and you'll just put your phone across it. Yeah, but do that means you don't just drive through the toll gate. No, no, you won't be able to just drive through the toll gate. You'll have to stop. Bump Let's it. see how they implement. Yeah. No, they say now bump payments and NFC. Drive through Tollgate. No stopping and... Exactly, that's yeah. what I'm driving at. Yeah. Yeah. NFC range is a little bit short, yeah. as far well as we understand. You have to like RFID. Okay. Yeah. Um, they I'm say sure they're going to make a plan, so okay. maybe well, Bluetooth. Uh, do, yeah. They're going to do shared trading. Your Mac trading. address on your Bluetooth. And something... Right. Sorry, they're going to do? Shared trading. You can trade shares from the app hmm. soon. Oh, oh. And wait, wait. GPS. No, but the GPS doesn't tell the yeah, talk out. The accuracy oh, yeah, is not if high If you enough. drive through the thing and you say, charge it, uh, the GPS it says, okay, I'm right near the toll gate, pull off my charge, and, and you drive through. Well, like Sorry, yes. Yeah, no, yes. And then a couple of ways to do it, yeah. They're yeah. also going to implement something else, uh, augmented reality. Into the app, if you want to go to a branch, that you can take a virtual tour of the branch from the app so you can see exactly where you want to go. That's so are they now actually promoting that you use your phone in the branch? They're promoting that you use your phone to get to the branch and exactly. Oh, then switch it off. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and um, obviously, e-bucks and e-wallet, all that is also going to be implemented in the app. So they have, and I'm quoting this very bottom from the CEO. He says they do not have enough developers. They're looking for people. So if you're interested, Go spam F&B. <laughs> and but they're looking for girl developers <laughs> by a specific request from the developing team. Okay. I could hear them cheering from the back when he said that, but that's what they want. Um, yeah, and they're just excited about the mobile landscape. Right now, he says, if you're an uh, old web phone user, you can do more banking with the old cell phone banking than you can do with this, but they're working very hard to implement things within the next cool. two weeks to three Look, months. Well, you started the question, why not use the browser? Yes. Okay, very simple. Um, for some reason, the font size. I can sh I'm not going to show you on air. I can show you off air. I've been using the mobile banking forever. Yeah. I mean, my wife... Uh, SMS me this morning, can I quickly just transfer some money for it? So I've been using it forever. And for some reason in the browser, the font is too small. So you end up every page, you're zooming, you're yeah, zooming, But that zooming. tells you that they're not putting it, pushing through the right style sheet for, for the browser. Yes. They have Apps is fine on cell phone banking. They have probably picked, yeah. Uh, look, That's the one thing. The only reason for why I'm asking is yeah. that great they're doing this app and all the rest of it. But I want now all those features to now also be in... Okay, except the augmented reality and all that, I understand won't be. Yeah. But I want any feature that they're doing in the one, I want to be in the, the internet banking one. Now, next thing, there's a new phone. Uh, Windows Mobile comes out. They're planning on building an app for that as well. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, no name brand X phone comes out. Yes. Now there's no app for it. And now the mobile experience is not good enough. So I'm sure they'll keep on developing the mobile experience. I, okay, I so can't see them. My, my, I can't my see them because no, they're only releasing for Android, iPhone, and BlackBerry. They're not really releasing anything for Symbian. No, they, they're going to do uh, the OV app is already in the market pending approval. Okay. Oh, wow. um, and they're working on the Windows Phone 7 one. 
Um, and they're I, gonna I guess work. it's quite difficult to do a Windows Phone 7 app when you don't have developer access from this country. Yeah, I'm so just putting that out there, Microsoft. Yeah, so they, they said they're gonna gonna work on that. And they say it's it's optimized for touchscreen devices at the moment. Um, but they are working on one for the like the Blackberry Pro. It's got the keypad, yeah. you know, QWERTY keyboard. They're gonna do one for that as well. Cool. Uh, they're on a side note, great that we've got a company doing this, and mm. well done F and B for that. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, and cool. Web should actually start working together. And they can chat to. Okay, there's that company who we um with it, who have a very very specific Java app that dies all the damn time and gives. Grief in about oh, every company yes. we have, yes. and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, um, but yeah, yes. it is encouraging. I mean, you see all this innovation happening in the mobile space in, in Kenya and Nigeria. Um, you know, having one of our bigger companies, f you know, doing something like this is really encouraging to see because you, you, you can't help but feel that South Africa is really just lagging behind the rest of the continent. Mm. Um, and that's what they said this morning as well. They want to. They want to push innovation on this, and they decided to just work as, as hard as they can on this and, and try and, instead of following the trend, set the standard and, and make something new and exciting mm. for, for us in South Africa. I, must just, I yeah. just want to add, uh, what was frustrating is, so I'm standing in this queue, I yeah. see the tweets, I go into Android Market, install the app, you have launched the app, and then they tell you, okay, please activate this device yeah. in your web that's, profile. That's another thing that, um, <laughs> if your phone gets stolen, this. uh someone asked a question regarding security, what happens if your phone gets stolen, you have to sign in with your profile when you use the app, but you also, first time you use it, you have to activate it on online banking, like you would if you a cloud device user, Ubuntu One, you, have, you can add or, or remove a device via the browser, so if your phone gets stolen, log into mobile banking and just disconnect the device, so it won't be able to access your, your cool. banking. Ah, that's very that's cool. Nice. So so passwords and that's the reason for the first time you have to access it, you have to go online, you, you sign in, with your banking yeah. application password, your, your online banking password. Then you go into, on your browser, sign into to your FNB account. Then you get, that screen comes up immediately. You don't have to go search, it tells you, you a new device has been added. Go through a few steps to add it. You set the payment limits on this device, how much you can pay from it, like with a card. And then you just say, okay, and then you can sign into the app. And, and another thing, to use the full services, you have to be an FNB customer, obviously, but there are some value-added services that non-FNB customers can use in the app as well. Um, you exchange can, rate. You can view the exchange rate, you can find ATMs, and you can find branches and stuff like that from that without, without cool. signing in. If you're a young lady there on the side, um, typically FNB, I made sure if you can bring up this camera, just on the preview so I can see where it is. When you open up, the, the there we go. Nice little animation. Mm. That comes up quite nicely. And look at look at the slogan. Look at the slogan. F and B. Can you read that? How can we help you? How can we help you? <laughs> and then wait for it. Wait for it. Mm. And then it actually comes up. So the top button is to log in. Yeah. And I can't read the rest. Help the gents. ATM branch locator. Contact us and for, uh, forex. forex. So I, I would presume forex is then a yeah. free service available to everybody. There you go. Cool. Donk. Let nice. the rest follow that. Seven point one two. No, man. <laughs> Sorry. It's I wanted good. to buy stuff on Steam. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to comment on, on the way they presented it this morning. It was very yeah. nice. They gave us flash drives with all the press releases on it, plus everything they used in the presentation, the video clips and stuff was added, and everyone got 500 rands worth of internet vouchers that oh, you can use. Cool. Yeah, so you can sign and get they got an ADSL voucher and stuff. And all of this hubbub going on, they handed us each an iPad with the app installed to play with. And obviously, they took them back afterwards. Oh. Yeah, oh. Wait, I've got an Android. No, don't <laughs> care. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was, it was very nice. And I got, got a sense from them that they're excited about pushing the, the, the mobile space on this, you know. So it's, it, was, it was a good, good launch. And it was exciting to, to be able to, you know, be there and just have some fun. Yeah, it was really it. cool seeing your tweets. Um, so thanks yeah. a lot. Mm. The price you saw, 712 is selling price, not buying price. Buying is 6.75. Oh, nice. Um, uh, one thing, there was, a, there was a comment from the IRC I just wanted to share on this topic cool. before we yeah. move on. Uh, it's from Mixer, who says, if they don't make it a swipe uh, at the toll gate now, um, to, you know, for those just tuning in now, <laughs> and we were talking <laughs> about how you were going to uh, use your smartphone or how FNB was going to have what they call Possibly. a bump payment yeah. um, where you drive through a toll gate and they just deduct the money automatically. And um, Mixer said if they don't make it a swipe, it might pick up all the phones in the car and charge everyone. Yeah, but also... You, you yeah, good you point. Know, <laughs> with yeah. this, you have to... Like, also with all these things, you, you, you want it that you load an app. You must do some process to activate it. Because I don't always want to pay at the toll gate. Or, or you're driving next to the toll gate. 
you know, there's, there's roads that go past the highway and then next you get charged. Yeah. So you do want some activation. Just coming back to, do you know how the old bump used to work? Because that had no NFC or Bluetooth communication in that. You're talking about the e-tag? No, there was a program called Bump, bump. where you used to transfer uh, business okay. contacts. Is what it, it on the accelerometer? It picks up the accelerometer and then activates it. Pulls in GPS, sends it through to the servers in America. Both of them do that. They say, okay, two people have done it. Who's two of the closest? Okay, well, it's you two want to transfer the thing. Oh then my sends the data off. through to the US server, back again, all the way through to you. And it feels like you're just actually transferring it magically through the air. So you need to make sure your what GPS is switched on. Mm. And your uh, internet services. Otherwise, the bump would actually not work between no. you and me. No. QR well, codes. Here we go. Does fix it. Encrypted QR codes. Cool. There was a guy. What would who be the point of encrypted? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> because I can't read it. <laughs> and why does no, for transactions? For, for transactions between four four. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Good point. <laughs> Good so point. I just want to say that there was a guy with, an, uh, with a phone who had iOS 5 installed and the app works for him as well. Because someone oh, okay. asked, what about when iOS 5 comes out with the app work? And they said, no. Nope. And he had one there and it worked for him. All right. awesome. Are you saying that there are certain apps that are actually not going to work on iOS 5? I don't know. That's just one of the questions. Look, there are anything, anything, when, you, when you upgrade things, sometimes it breaks. But I must say, Apple's generally with the things have been very, very good that the upgrades okay. has, hasn't broken. Not that I care. Yeah. I care. Also, <laughs> some, you some support uh, doing iPhone. the presentation. I'm guessing he was one of the developers who worked on it. I didn't get his name, um, but he asked a lot of what if questions, and it was a very Google. It's because Google likes having a presentation. What if you could do this? What if you could do that? And and this guy did the same thing. And he said, well, one of the things they did when they built this app was asking what if questions. What if you could do X, Y, and Z? And that's when they brought up the uh, augmented reality. Why would you include that in the app? And they said, well, what if you have someone you know, going into a branch, don't know where to go. Why not just allow them to see the branch and find out where they have to go in the beginning? So they're very fond of asking the what-if questions, the really left-field questions, and the developers have the freedom to build the app and get cool. as much funky stuff into that as possible, and then they see if it works or not, and then go from there. Mm. Mm. I'm just going to move us on before we get too stuck in this. No yeah. Um, Look, it's exciting. That's yeah. why no, we're getting stuck. Cool. That's what I said. Yeah. Awesome, awesome that they're doing it. Let the rest follow. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the BBC Crowdsource 3G coverage map. Mm -hmm. which is very cool and basically what? well you know in this country like here you always have you, people complain about Vodacom coverage maps or MTN coverage maps and, and where it is and then they like 702 might go out and then they'll get a car to, to measure where it or is or you get the uh, car so I imagine also does it just to see w how well they're covering the area well BBC decided to go a slightly different route they made an app and they told everybody saw these apps on your phone uh, it, was, it specifically was an Android app and as these apps, the people wander around with GPS, would be measuring the signals in all the different locations. So instead of just having one car at one time, you've got all these thousands of people busy measuring that signal in live, at a, at a live state. And you know these things fluctuate all the time. I know mm. at work, um, most of the day is fine, and all of a sudden, all the phones in our office just suddenly disappear. Uh, yes. Disappear. And this picks that up. So you actually have a, almost a real time coverage map. Um, across the whole of England, wherever anybody's actually using a phone. This is actually a great idea for something to do at my broadband if we ever had the money. Um, uh, and, and you'd have to have the smartphone penetration in South Africa to do it. But I mean, if you do a BlackBerry app and an Android app and an iOS app... You, you would cover a large percentage. And, and, and a, a Symbian app, yes. because we still have a lot of Nokia users. In the, so Nokia and BlackBerry, like off the bat, I mean, sorry, Android and iOS users, w of which I am one... Um, but uh, th that's the majority of the smartphone users in the country covered. If you could make it work, that would be really This rad. app is in the market, so why? But it probably speaks back to their servers. Yeah. Right? Yes. But I mean, if the rest of the world just starts using this app, they're going to get information. See, the thing is, uh, uh, I must say, I haven't actually looked at the app and stuff like that, but I think it only shows UK GPS coordinates. Sorry, I can just butt in here. I was just, while I was talking, looking for news on the FNB app. Yeah. And four hours ago, the FNB app was the number one free app in SA. Yes. No, no, so, that. yeah. And, and according to Michael Jordan, I think he's the CEO, he says, we expected fast cool, adoption, uh, but okay. this yeah. is crazy. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, if we could do this in the country, because you have a lot of people complaining about it, it, it would work incredibly well. Really. I see Johan's busy trying to install the app and see if he can. It's happy. Mm. Yeah, oh, go for it. Um, uh, I mean, I don't have a SIM card in this device. Oh, so well, I've got here I'll while I what, talk. We'll install it and we'll we'll feedback. Give feedback next week. 
Sure. No problem. Um, uh, and something I just wanted to mention is that, I mean, we've got that speed test thing going on on my broadband now, right? So we've, we're already busy chatting to ISPs about um, their IP ranges, uh, you know, for their various services to help us keep the results accurate. And, um, and so sort of building on that system into a system like this, uh, all of a sudden you can have 3G coverage measured and stuff mm. like that because, you know, so when you're, you, you, you can measure, okay, I've, or you can just go, I've got this IP address. When you report back to our server, you tell us what IP address you've, you've got. Immediately we'll know which service provider you're on. Um, and in the app you can also have the speed test. Yeah. Cool. That'd be really great. So when you guys doing this? <laughs> <laughs> just on your, uh, that whole thing, um, I submitted two speed tests over that international VPN service I'm using. Mm. And I'm not sure if, if, if um, because you basically measure um, from South Africa, so international, and then you, your, your, your menu selection at the top, which you then say, you say, I'm using whoever's ISP to do that. Um, are you using the SpeedNet application for that whole test speed? We're using speedtest.net's stuff. Um, it's, it's their application and their, and their back end. Um, running to your service at running on our service yeah you pay okay. them um, for their technology and because so they also wrote the mobile app so um, I'm sure that'll cost more <laughs> but yes it'll be nice to have it because the mobile app actually I don't know if anybody's used it it actually take, switches on the GPS when you go into yes. the mobile speed test and actually gives you in your reports the, the, the GPS location from where you did the test mm. so the data is there it's already there so it's more just saying okay people uh Broadband, you can my broadband. You can have my GPS coordinates with my submission. Here you go, done. Mm. And then if you get the the IP ranges from the service providers, you'll know with that IP address against that speed from that GPS was an MTN connection. I yeah. Mean, so it's actually not that far away. Yeah. To yeah. get it right. I would love to get into it. Now, if only I didn't have so many deadlines in the day. Yeah, I know. I must say, <laughs> there's so many things going on at the moment. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about something else then quickly. Uh, you guys have your conference coming up soon. Yeah, so it's one of the things. That you oh, soon. Oh, October. Oh, but yeah, everybody, Dara is now. The date has been to set. To me, that's soon because <laughs> we won't say why now. But no, I'm, you will I'm not gonna, say why. I'm going to stress. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. No. Cool. Yeah. No. Um. So we we announced the conference. I mean, it's to be expected. We'll have the conference every when? year. When? What? What date? Start of the date. People can dire us as date. Okay, cool. 26th of October, 2011. And it's going to be at Vodacom World now. It's still Voter World. Um, and if you want to find the date, look at star dates. Let's see. It it's will be on there. Excellent. Yeah. So it's going to be um, at the usual venue um, at the, about the same time of year. So now 26th October, 2011. It's normally October, November. Hold on. Same location. Uh, no, no, we're going to actually probably have a bigger, we're going to probably go into the bigger the, the dome. hall. Okay. Um, yeah, because last year was so big. Um, and the, Unbelievable. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, the turnout was great. Um, so uh, we always get thousands and thousands of registrations, but we see a fallout rate of, I think, 50 to 60%. Um, so um, we expect registrations to be <laughs> quite high. Um, and, and based on that, we'll decide on which venue. But uh, I think we're pretty much settled on the larger venue this year cool. to prevent the sort of spillover. Like last, last year, if it wasn't for the fact that we had video streaming, we would have been in a bit of a pickle because um, – so thank you very much. Um, because Okay, uh, what Jan is on about, uh, <laughs> my, my holding company, Mindset Network, we've already agreed to cover the event again online. So people start telling your friends and your family and everything that if they cannot come to Joburg for this event, to still put in leave for that day and sit behind your PC. Um, we will be doing again a full video production from the event, uh, switching over and actually streaming it out from the event so you can watch it live. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and this year, sorry. Jan and them will actually monitor the IRC channel and the... Uh, oh, I was just going to ask that. RC channel and the Twitter channels for pro possible feedback into the event. Yeah, I, we, I did actually monitor Twitter last year. Exactly. As well as the forum. Obviously, the forum is our primary. Yeah, sorry. Um, for, not uh, IRC forum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, our, is, our for, you know, is our primary sort of feedback channel. Um, so, uh, and just to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that happens at this conference, is that at last year's conference was where Rudy Janssen got up and said, we will no longer pay for peering. Um, so, that's the event he chose to lay down the law. Um, and we expect similar stuff to 
to go down this year. Well, even better for me was Yanni van Sales getting up and t- from Vodacom, um, technical manager from Vodacom, and then telling <laughs> Rudy that he loves the same way Bandcap service. <laughs> and Lars saying to the whole audience, do not get, un- what? do not roam with Do not roam, roam because it's a cartel. Because it's absolutely too expensive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wish it's brilliant. And, and it's more that, I mean, that this is putting his head on the block. He doesn't just say, oh, it's expensive. He's like, it's a cartel. The companies are colluding to keep prices high. So that's hardcore. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Do you want to just quickly go over who the speaker's going to yeah, be? Yeah, sure. Um, we've got, obviously, v- Vodacom CEO, Peter Ace. Yeah. Um, he probably won't do a keynote. Hey, you've got to start does. with, who's your MC this year? I see you got him back. Yeah, we, we got Aki on the Oh, oh brilliant. He's, He's good. good. Yeah, it's going to be really cool to have him. Um, uh, he's a really good MC, um, very, very and, good. and uh, he's he's actually also quite a good um, uh, panel moderator. Um, well, he's so in technology; he's the right person to to do yeah. MC and, and so actually be involved. Yeah, so it's very cool to 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 have him MC the show. Um, Peter Ace will be there, obviously. We'll have Rudy Janssen back there again. Um, uh, former sales CC yeah, Lars yes. Reichelt will uh, has has said yeah he's expressed interest that he that he wants to still be there. Oh, he cool. was on the on the on the docket, um, you know, e- even before his resignation was announced. Um, and so yeah, we look forward to hosting him in his role as p- person interested in South African telecoms rather than CEO of CLC. Um then CECOM CEO Brian uh, Hellehy, um, I hope I s- pronounced that correctly. Last year, I think he couldn't make it, if I remember correctly, and somebody stood in for him. Um, the Broadband Infraco CEO, Dr. Andrew Shaw, MTNSA CTO Labo Kanakaratnam. He's always, um, he, he's very cool to speak to. He comes from an engineering background um, on, technical, on the technical matters of the network. Um, so I've got to say this, and since I'm looking at this list, and uh, t- uh, f- three years ago, you couldn't get Telcom, now they're on twice. Oh, sorry. One is Aita. Sorry, sorry. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know I know Aita doesn't want to necessarily be associated with Telcom, but um, they they are powered by Telcom, so same company. Um, yeah, so we've got Steve Lewis, who's also great to talk to from Telcom. Uh, Vox Telecom CEO Douglas Reed, ECN CEO John Holdsworth. <laughs> He's an entertaining speaker. He calls a spade a spade. Um, Web Africa CEO Matthew Tag. Um, Ata Head Amit Maharaj, Altec CEO Wayne de Nabrega, and Vodacom's Yanni von Sale, uh, who we've already spoken about. Um, and then ISPA's GM Ant Brooks, um, and the interviews I've had with him um, in person and via email have always been very informative. Awesome. Sounds and good. then the Mampara of the Year reward. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see. It's going to be an interesting one this year because it's going to be difficult. Yeah, and they're voting on who, who stuffed us up the most. Yeah. Who was it last year? Ikasa. Ah. They, they don't like ap- apparently being called Mamparas. So we might have to consider renaming the award, but it's a fairly sort of standard I didn't, name. I didn't scheme. tell you that story. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they apparently they don't appreciate being called nice. Mamparas. Oh. So hopefully they've done enough this year to not, not, be not qualify for the award. Cool. Yes. Um, I'm just watching the time. I'm just going to make mix this around. I just also want to just check quickly. Google also launched a... Something this engage could engage, yes. And once again, Quinton was there, so yep. yeah, yeah. You, you, you're being a better journalist than me this week. Well done, <laughs> 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 uh, um, yeah. Google engage, yeah, he's even clean shaven. <laughs> what can I what say? What are you implying? <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, beard song, uh, that's uh, all I'm gonna yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm so sad that I shaved because the beard song is coming up. Okay, Google engage was launched this week. Um, it's basically a partner program for AdWords specialists. That's that's putting it very simply. There are a lot of um, add-ons and features. uh, Like if you sign up for Google Engage, they give you some AdWords (laughs) vouchers to give out to new customers to get them to work with you. The usual thing that if you become one of the supported partners, it's a test that you need to write and stuff like that. that. Yeah, they don't require the tests. But um, they they encourage you to to stay up to up to speed. They they give free webinars. You know, it's 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 a nice engage package for for SEO and and SEM people. Cool. Um, they had some very nice success stories with people who started using engage. And obviously, they would be pushing the success stories. But um, yeah, it's. I was a bit lost because I'm a, I'm a techie guy, but uh, so it was a lot of marketing speak and, and AdWords speak, you know, but it was good. It was, it was, it's an exciting program. I see a lot of their focus apparently was also on 
um, small business, yes. getting small business on targeted at smaller SEO and SEM companies who has clients with ten to twenty employees, getting them going and and, and making a success because a, a large part of your online presence is smaller companies. So getting them to be able to start buying AdWords and using AdWords ex effectively. And there was also a lot of training on how, uh, you know, to best use AdWords, where to see your niches, where your ads are cheaper and so on. And Google Engage has some nice online tools as well to, s to help you uh, manage your account more effectively from there. And it includes managing your ads on both YouTube and, and, and Google search and all that as well. So yeah, and they're also planning and working on getting, you know those irritating ads that you get in your YouTube videos? On the mobile videos on your device as well. So you're gonna get ads in there as well on your devices. So yeah, that's that's cool. the short and long of it. Right. Okay. Then I uh, just wanted to ask. I know uh, Jan is busy, is threatening to uh, be downloading uh, OS the new OS X Lion. Yeah, it's done. Actually, I can install it. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, but my thing is, in this country, it's four point two gigs. Hey. Uh, 3.74 something like that yeah. they did say from day one that you can go to an Apple store and get, get it yep. yeah but not in the, the if you've yeah. if you ever try to download a three point a quarter four gig file uh, it takes a while it took me two hours and I was I was um, creaming a four gig connection at work it, it was going to be a uh, two hour download and I've been fin I've polished it off on my ATA connection here okay. um, so um, by the way uh, Johan I actually uh, on be ex exactly because Apple announced that I contacted Core and said will the Apple premium resellers in South Africa be offering the same service and they basically said no um, I so it's not available in this country. It, it, you can't you can't download it from within their app their, their iStores and even if you could they're very spread out um, and that's the iStores, and, and not talking for other Apple premium resellers like Incredible Connection and Dion Wyatt, who I don't think have in-store Wi-Fi. Um, at least the iStores do. So if you rock up there and go, listen, I want to download line, I'm sure they'll help you. Um, My question but is, then you, is, you, is, you, is, is you it cashable? Are you going to hang around for two hours? Yeah. And, and this, is, a, hours, this is something hours. that I still want to follow up on because there were rumors on 9 to 5 Mac that they, would, they shipped them caching servers, Mac, Mac Pros or Mac Minis or whatever, as servers, Mac Mini servers. Um, with that we're going to add whoa, this whoa, caching whoa, servers. Whoa. Sorry. Did you just say Mac Mini server? Mac Mini server. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Look, for, for a caching server, you don't necessarily... <laughs> for, for, to cache oh, one single Am file... Am I the only one caching the humor in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Mac, Mac Mini server. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Core i7 for the win. What, formatted in load lightnings? Yes, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if we could cache this, that on Squid. Yeah, uh, it, it, well, that's the thing is, I want to actually see he, a download, yeah. and that's what I'm thinking yeah. because... Well, d delete your download, just start it again, yeah. And, let and it we can take a look. Because the, the thing is, um, there were some guys in our forum thread saying that they've uh, that the thing is cached on Akamai. And there were other guys saying that Apple will be launching the thing on a USB stick for $69. Okay. So uh, we'll see. What I heard was that there is apparently, now you'll have to check for after you've installed it, there is a way for you to, after you've installed it, actually write the installation file to a DVD. Well, I have also heard that you can write the installation files to, to USB or DVD or whatever, and then yes. you can just give that to your chum who, who wasn't can't get to it. Like End yeah. of the day, what do I care? I don't like Mac. <laughs> well, look, it's, it, it was the big uh, my, news My of thing the day. is, if you've got a big corporation that has a whole ton of these, you, you want to know, can, can you cache the file? Because I'm telling you now, most proxies aren't designed to cache. That's how it's a file, no. Anything above, most of them above 500 yeah. megs, they don't cache. You have cache. to set yeah. your cache very high. Um, oh, because true. your cache server is not going to keep up. Yeah, it's not going to uh, work. Technical reasons behind that, but most cache servers is not going to cache this file. Well, so now you've got ten guys. So well, that, at the end of the day, <laughs> this is like when I spoke yes, to Rudy like at last year, because just before the my broadband, man, my broadband. That one. You can try that again. <laughs> just before the my broadband conference last year, um, World of Warcraft, the new update was released, mm. and that was eleven gig upgrade. And he actually said, no, the engineers were monitoring it on the network, and they started figuring out those files and actually changed their caching service to specifically cache those. Otherwise, international bandwidth, they, everybody would have killed them, all the users. Because yeah, yeah. I ended up downloading the thing three times before, before I could make it work. But that was more my mistake than Blizzard's. But, so I'm sure that, uh, like, uh, yeah, we're back to MWeb. They'll actually pick up, and if it's cacheable, they'll actually cache it. But bottom line is, yeah, if you don't have an uh, uncapped account, how are you going to ever get this update? Yeah, well, so look, if you're running a couple of Mac machines at your offices, 
and this is exactly why um, why 95 Mac was speculating about this uh, this caching server, is because there was apparently an image on there um, called Joint Venture or something like that, which is especially for these companies with deals like this. And so, um, and obviously this is something that Microsoft has had licked for quite some time. You you install the thing to your Microsoft server at work and you blast that W S U S and you blast yeah, out your machine. Microsoft there. to do the utmost to make it so you can't cache the updates. Well, but except they on their server, you can on their servers now, can't you? Yeah, they've got. You've got to use the WSS server. Yes, yeah. and even trying to cache the stuff coming from the W cache server, Microsoft go. They trust me because I've looked quite a bit at this. They really get out of their way to yes, yes. Because they, they, they took that site down. And they do. They took that site down. That did exactly this. That offered this as a service. I remember they want you to do it through their system, but yeah. Apple is doing the same. It seems it's it's, it's for the. I, I don't want to back Microsoft on this, or but at the end of the day, for the OS, the operating the operating system, system writers, they want to make sure that their deployment is secure. Yep. That's not hard to do. <laughs> in a controlled environment. Yeah, just install WSUS. No. But in any case. Anyway, I'm not going to go into this whole, whole debate. But, but, the, <laughs> but, the bottom, but, but the bottom line is, is that a, there it seems to be a, a solution for organizations. It's just not here. Okay. So it, it's available cool. at in countries with an official Apple presence right. and not just Apple premium resellers. Cool. But I, I will see if I can find a Mac. Hold on, hold on. Gonna install it, I'll, I'll work How can you tell me Apple doesn't have official presence if, they, if I can go walk into an Apple store? It's not an Apple store. It's yes, an it iStore. iStore is, a, is, a, is a probably a brand that a Core is allowed to use from Apple, but they are just an Apple premium reseller. Okay. Yeah. All right, interesting. Gives me another reason why I won't buy Apple. <laughs> All right, we, yeah. we we had a debate about what our last two story stories are going to be. Um, so we're just going to do both. Uh, we can sort of do both. So I'm going to mention the one. Yeah. I'm going to say I'm not going to play the video because it's a bit risque and I, 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 and it might offend some sensitive viewers. Yes. If if you have a beard, you'll love it. Um, if if you shave, you might get a bit insulted, but it's it's fun. It's really worth watching. That's um, it. I am growing my beard back. Um, basically, it's called. If your your dad doesn't have a beard, you've got two mums. Um, the, the the link will be in our show notes. But but it's look if you have a sense of humor, it really is a lot of fun. It's it's amusing, and it sort of starts off with you know teaching the guy teaching his guy, kid to shave for the first time and how this is just a bad idea. Yep, yep, and it it does. I mean, the, the, I think the title sounds homophobic. It really isn't. I don't think so. Anyway, I just yeah. think it's funny. Uh, on <coughs> the the topic of beards, since this is the kicker section of the of the show, there there's actually well established stories of the early Silicon Valley that uh, that there's a direct correlation between your pay grade and the awesomeness of your beard. So my if, gosh, if you grew an awesome beard, then you'd get promoted. If you're a clean shaven man, forget about it. You just wouldn't get promoted in the big <coughs> tech companies <coughs> in Silicon Bill Gates? Valley. <laughs> Yeah, he, owned the uh, <laughs> he owned the company. He dictated his own future, yeah, so he can't really. <laughs> but did you see that photo of them in the eighties? Yes. No, there's a lot of beards going. Around. But also, there are a lot more beards in the eighties. Maybe. Yeah. I think there's still quite a lot of beards going around in Silicon Valley. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to venture there's more beard now than moustache. That's because. Yes. Let's Magnum go is not in okay. the beard anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next one. Anyway, <laughs> into our other one, which is uh, I'm actually going to find the link. I've lost it quickly. Um, it's basically Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories. Yes, um, it's some guy who, about why you really want to make magnetic eyes. You know, like those bobbly eyes. Yes. Why you want to put ma make magnetic ones? Just if you're an uber geek, you want to do it. And it's just you, you go through the examples of what they've gone and done with these magnetic eyes. I want to do this. It's just uh, our mixer agrees, a and all of us. It's just all, all, all your objects now get this personality. He's got them stuck onto drawers. He's got oh. them stuck onto fire extinguishers, onto hammers. That hammer one's cool. You have to put it on it. I mean, just imagine that hammer hitting a nail. Caution. <laughs> <You're too laughs> uh, <laughs> the eyes go. Staplers. <laughs> paper clips. Well, whatever you put it on. Door it's, handle. It sort of gets this little personality. <laughs> and now it's, it's, it's this object that, you know, you feel something for. This hammer reminds me of a kid's story that my kids watch, uh, Handy Manny. Yes, all, all these yes. tools have the same look on their faces. The little, little hammer running around with eyes yeah. on it. Okay. With eyes, cool. yeah. Go and look Quite scary. Many. Scary. Yeah, so I love the skit shows. Lovely. I'm <laughs> going to do this. Comment, comment from IRC. Uh, stick it on paper clips. 
Clippy lives. <laughs> <laughs> Clippy's back. And then the hammer with eyes kills it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if any of you guys read, use, use, uh, read user friendly. And if you don't know who Clippy is, you are too young. <laughs> yeah, well, this one with the Clippy and the eye. Yeah. Well, but anyway, user friendly. Don't all go check it out. Uh, quite geeky and quite fun about a Canadian ISP uh, and all the shenanigans they get up. But there's Clippy has made an appearance this week, so. Put in the show notes. I'm not going to remember. Cool. Anyway, um, that's our show for this evening. I just want to thank uh, everyone, all the guests, or hosts, actually, and guests, uh, <laughs> and our mixer, who shall not be named, uh, Johan Els. Thank, thank you very much. You can uh, find me at Johan underscore Els on Twitter. Uh, Facebook is mostly for family, but uh, and then I run my blog, blog.who hyphen Els. That's here at ZA. Cool. And check out Stardate. Check out Stardate. Hmm. Uh, Quentin Roy, where can everyone find you? Quentin ZA on Twitter, and my blog is geek.cz with a Q instead of a K. Easy as that. All right, cool. Jan Vermeulen, staff writer. In s- indeed, staff writer at mybroadband.co.za. Flamey there, and also Jan V ZA on the Twitface. Cool, and myself, you can find me on Let's Talk Network to TV <laughs> 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 and at Tim underscore Hawk. All right, thanks everyone for the show. Thank you Thank very much. You. Have a good night. Cheers. <laughs>